It's a taste of all a day not to miss. Werther's Original Limited Edition Harvest Caramels. Discover the original fall flavor. Still fresh. <laughs> Unstoppable. In-wash scent booster. <laughs> Downy Unstoppables. Hey everybody, this is Boris Kojo. I am co-hosting E.T. tomorrow. Don't miss it. I am so excited. My twin, Boris Kojo, is Lord. back to co-host. <laughs> We've also got an exclusive on tour with Girl Dad Thomas Red. He's about to welcome baby number. Happening now. The Castle Hills police taking into custody a man accused of sexual assault and indecency with a child. Why authorities are worried there could be other victims. Next. Plus, we have an update on the murder investigation into a mother of four who disappeared nearly two weeks ago. The new charges her boyfriend is now facing. There is reason to check your freezer and your pantry. Some frozen pepperoni pizzas and some cashew snack packs are recalled. Coming up, we'll explain why. And we're still looking at some showers and thunderstorms tonight. I'll help time that out for you and talk about rain chances the rest of the week. News at 5 starts right now. And first at 5, a man charged with tampering with evidence in the disappearance of Crystal Garcia is now charged with murder. Her death ruled a homicide after her body was found in Comal County last week. According to an arrest affidavit, Garcia's body was found in a Husky brand plastic toolbox. Francisco Javier Garcia Ventura was arrested after he reportedly confessed to murdering Crystal Garcia to family members, saying he beat her till she stopped breathing and took her body to San Marcos. Garcia Ventura was turned in before he could leave for Mexico. Investigators searched Crystal Garcia's apartment. They found evidence of blood. A few days later, her body was found in Colmau County. We also have an update in the murder investigation of 40-year-old Christopher Olivares. San Antonio police have now recovered a big piece of evidence, Olivares's car. They believe the suspect may have taken it from the scene. Olivares died on Saturday after he was stabbed near the 300 block of Kirk Place. That's on the south side, not far from Nagalitos and Highway 90. At last check, they are still looking for the suspect. If you have any information, you're asked to call SAPD at 210-207. 7635. An Alamo Heights ISD employee arrested today on allegations involving the sexual assault of a child. Castle Hills police say at least one victim has come forward, but given the suspect's possible access to other minors, this investigation is still going on. Patty Santos with a closer look at what police say the victim alleges. That suspect pretty stoned face as he walked out of the police station here on his way to the Bear County Jail and the police tell us he works for Alamo Heights Independent School District. This morning, a Castle Hills police investigation led to the arrest of 41 year old James Lachlan. Police tell us the alleged victim is a teenager that is known to him. It started when the victim told a friend at school who then notified school authorities. The victim alleges that in late July, Lachlan gave her liquor which made her feel tipsy. The teen says Lachlan then proceeded to sexually assault her. The victim says she told him that what he was doing was illegal, but he continued. Right now, police are hoping any other possible victims will get the courage to speak up. The victim is known to the suspect. Um, we hope that there's no other victims that are out there, but they are. Please call us if they recognize the suspect. This is video of the suspect arrested earlier today in a home in Castle Hills. Right now, Lachlan is looking at two felony counts of sexual assault with a child and indecency with a minor. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. We did reach out to Alamo Heights ISD to get a response. They tell us they are aware of these allegations and are cooperating with law enforcement. AHISD says that they take allegations of misconduct seriously. The employee in question has been placed on administrative leave and has not been on campus since the district was made aware of these allegations. We're still working to learn the name of a person killed in a hit and run crash last night. San Antonio police also looking for the driver. They say the victim, a 41 year old man crossing an intersection in the 500 block of Navarro, when he was hit by a driver, he died on his way to the hospital. Witnesses told investigators the driver seemed to be aware of what happened, but took off anyway. Now, if they're found, 
They face a charge of failure to stop and render aid. A pregnant woman okay after her vehicle crashed into another driver last night. This happening at the intersection of Loop 410 and San Pedro on the north side. San Antonio police say the woman crashed her vehicle into a truck. No one was hurt, but she was taken to the hospital as a precaution. Turning now to the vaccine front, Pfizer submitting vaccine data to the FDA for kids ages 5 to 11. Finally, they're seeking emergency use authorization for that particular age group after they say they tested the vaccine on more than 2,200 children. According to Pfizer, data from those clinical trials appears to be safe. I feel good. I feel proud that I got into it. I immediately wanted to do it so I can have more time with my friends without masks. Another concern on health officials' minds, flu season. The CDC recommending everyone ages six on up get the flu shot, with some exceptions. They say September and October are ideal times to get the flu shot. And Dr. Anthony Fauci says if you are getting your COVID vaccine, it's okay to get your flu shot at the same time. Warming up out there today. We started the day at 76. That's 10 degrees above average. The high humidity, of course, giving us the warmer mornings along with the clouds. And then 96 for the high temperature. The average high now 87 degrees. You look across our area and temperatures mostly into the 90s, 92 Windcrest and Bull Verde, 95 even in Utopia and Seguin currently at 96. Now, as we go through the evening, we'll see a few stray showers, but rain chances will be rising as we get on into the nighttime hours. I'm going to time out the storm, the storms for you as we go through the night tonight and even the rest of the week as we are expecting more rain chances and talk about how much rain we can get and all that coming right up, Steve. Bring on the rain. Thank you, Adam. A reminder, the special election to fill the seat in House District 118 happening right now. Polls are open until 7 o'clock tonight. The seat was left vacant after State Rep Leo Pacheco stepped down last month. These are the five candidates, Katie Farias, John Lujan, Desi Martinez, Frank Ramirez, and Adam Sawyer. Again, polls are open until 7 o'clock. The results will be posted on KSAT.com shortly after the polls close tonight. In less than 72 hours, the federal government will have to shut down. That is, unless Congress passes a funding bill. And as of right now, lawmakers are in a gridlock. ABC's Elizabeth Schultz explains why progress has been so slow. Keeping the government open and preventing default is vital to our country's future. And Democrats are going to make sure we do not lapse on either. Without a funding agreement, the government will shut down at midnight Thursday. That could mean thousands of federal workers get furloughed, including 43% of Department of Health and Human Services staff. Having services shut down, staffing cut in different agencies is not in the interest of addressing any crisis we face. And Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen now says the government won't be able to pay its bills unless Congress raises the debt limit by October 18th. A scenario she calls catastrophic as nearly 50 million Americans wouldn't receive Social Security payments. It would be disastrous for the American economy, for global financial markets, and for millions of families and workers whose financial security would be jeopardized by delayed payments. Republicans are standing firm, insisting Democrats must include a debt ceiling hike as part of their three and a half trillion dollar budget bill. If Democrats want to use fast track party line procedures to ram through trillions more in inflationary socialism, they'll have to use the same tools to handle the debt limit. Democrats are still trying to iron out their differences over their budget bill, which includes funding for universal pre-K, paid maternity leave, free community college, and investments to fight climate change. There's one more piece to this puzzle in Congress, and that's the roughly $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill. It's on track for a final vote in the House on Thursday, but Senator Bernie Sanders is now urging progressives to block it until that broader budget bill is passed. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Happening on Wednesday, we'll be live streaming a town hall to preview San Antonio's Startup Week. Startup Week is held in October, brings more than 2,000 entrepreneurs to downtown San Antonio. The town hall will be hosted by Max Massey and Tiffany Huertas. They'll be joined by members of the city's business and tech communities. Again, the town hall will be live streamed on Wednesday at 2 p.m. That's tomorrow. You can watch it on KSAT.com or on our KSAT streaming app. 
A new episode of Case Ad Explains is out tonight. This week, the Explains team is looking into two planned highway expansion projects in our area and why some are concerned that these projects will do more harm than good. Over the past couple of years, more people have been raising concerns about the impact highways can have, saying that they can divide neighborhoods and lead to air quality concerns. So we talked to the Alamo Area MPO about how decisions are made, and about which transportation projects will receive funding. They told us they get directives from both the federal and local government and regional board members, and that over the years, those directives have changed. We've been hearing more about the priority and emphasis of equity, also on resilience. Uh, so making sure that, or, or, or starting to make sure that our investments are going to hold up to changing um, weather patterns and climate. KSAT explains what's driving highways will be available to stream on demand tonight at 7 o'clock on KSAT.com, the KSAT TV app, and our Facebook page. If you can't watch it live, we're going to post a full episode so you can watch on demand later on this evening. A consumer alert now about some foods that may be in your freezer or pantry. The USDA warning about a mix up with some popular pepperoni pizzas and some nut snacks sold under the HEB name are also pulled off shelves. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz with those recalls and more. Snack Pack Recall. These 100 calorie packs of nuts sold under the HEB brand name are recalled because they could contain bits of glass. They're the lightly salted roasted cashew halves and pieces. The manufacturer, Suntree Snacks, says no injuries have been reported. You can return them to the store and get your money back. Pizza mix-up. Nestle is recalling 28,000 pounds of frozen DiGiorno crispy pan crust pepperoni pizza. Because of a packaging mix-up, the box may actually contain three meat pizza, which includes soy protein. It's harmful to people who are allergic. The best buy date is March 2022. Return it or toss it out. Hoverboard Danger. Razor is recalling the battery packs on 237,000 Hover Tracks 2.0 self balancing scooters. The GLW battery pack may overheat or explode. The company has more than 20 reports of smoke or fire. They were sold between 2016 and 2018. Contact Razor for a new battery. And heater hazard. Harbor Freight Tools is recalling thousands of these portable heaters sold last winter after reports of propane leaks and fire. It's the Bauer Forced Air Propane Heater. Contact Harbor Freight for instructions to determine if yours is safe. For more details on any of these recalls, head to our website, kset.com. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. LULAC, the League of United Latin American Citizens, has a long history in the U.S. and it has dealt with major issues from civil rights to discrimination. Up next, what LULAC's new state director hopes to achieve and who is calling on to help. As the nation's oldest and largest Hispanic organization, LULAC has seen a lot of changes over the years. It's taken on a lot of issues, too. Housing, education, discrimination, and civil rights. But as Jesse DeGuriato tells us, LULAC's newly re-elected state director is considered a first. Long before Rodolfo Rosales was twice re-elected as LULAC state director, he remembers some in his family saying, I don't mind if, if, little, if, if little Rudy is, is gay, but it's just all those other gays. Well, then who is little Rudy going to play with? Actually, he says the truth of the matter. There's a little Rudy in everyone's family, one way or another. As its first openly gay state director, he credits LULAC's former national president, his mother, Rosa Rosales, for much of his commitment to equality. Now a large and inclusive family. After his parents moved back to San Antonio from Michigan years ago, he remembers how impressed his mother was by the prosperity in downtown San Antonio. But then she went to the west side of San Antonio and nothing had changed. Pushing, he says, for those overdue changes were his mother and other activists of the time. Much like what Rosales says he wants to do with the nation's oldest Hispanic civil rights organization. But I think with my reelection and I think with others to come, I think that we're going to 
push the organization into the future, whether it likes it or not. LULAC is open and ready for business. We need new blood. We want you. We welcome you, especially now with the attack on our voting rights. We need you. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Looking outside with live cam, pretty out there. Very sunny today, but just you wait. Waiting on the rain, Adam. Yeah, and it looks like we've got pretty good potential for some showers and thunderstorms as we go through the night. We already have a little bit of activity out there, but it's pretty isolated at the moment and pretty short lived as well. Here are our headlines. Storms likely tonight. Not everybody's going to see them, but I think the majority of us will. And we could easily see a few inches of rain in some spots. One to three inches, not out of the question where the heaviest rains fall. And then rain chances, they continue. This isn't it. We'll have more rain chances coming down the pike. All right, let's get right to the radar screen. Here's the big picture. A little bit of activity closer to Houston throughout the day today. You head just north of our area. You get closer to San Saba and Brownwood. That's where we've got some active showers and thunderstorms just outside of our viewing area southwest of us. A few pop ups there. Uh, basically, these aren't lasting very long. These are highly isolated in and around I 35 and they're not lasting very long, but I do anticipate increasing instability overnight and more organization to showers and thunderstorms later on tonight. You go along the Rio Grande del Rio down toward Camado. We've got some showers and thunderstorms, but this activity has weakened a little bit. It is throwing an outflow boundary toward Brackettville, so a little bit of a cool breeze for some folks there. So uh, highly isolated right now. Big picture shows we're not the only ones in Texas getting in on some of this action, especially looking off to the north and you get closer to Waco and Dallas. Some good beneficial rain falling even in parts of the Panhandle. What's driving this? Well, one element that's driving it big upper level disturbance. This upper level low near Albuquerque, that's helping to generate some energy, throw some energy our way and even some moisture as well coming off the Pacific. So let's time it out for you. We know what's causing it. Let's get to the timeline here through eight, nine o'clock. Pretty isolated in nature. Not all of us will be seeing rainfall this evening. Later on tonight, we anticipate the radar to start filling in a bit. This is 10 o'clock. Then we go toward midnight and notice how things start to close in on Bear County in San Antonio. And I think basically 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. is our most likely time of seeing some heavy rainfall in and around San Antonio. This is 2 a.m. here. We progress a little closer to sunrise and this activity moves out of town. And by sunrise, I still think we'll be cloudy, just not much in terms of rain left over. So as I said, between about 11 p.m. and 4 a.m., we're giving it that 70 percent chance with some pockets of heavy rain. And if these storms organize, which they could, if they come together the right way, we could have some isolated areas of gusty winds. We could have some wind gusts that would be notable, maybe 50 to 60 miles per hour. So of course, we'll keep an eye on that as well. Be here all night watching it and even being on air and live on your app when needed and when necessary, when the activity is out there. Notice by tomorrow morning, we actually see a little bit of clearing, but that's not it for rain chances. OK, look at this. We get into especially Friday and Saturday. We're expecting scattered to fairly widespread showers and even a few thunderstorms. So good, much needed moisture. 89 now in Holotus and Canyon Lake, 99 Stinson, previously 100 last hour, and we're currently 90 in Bernie right now. Look at the cooler air Del Rio, a little outflow boundary, 88 degrees. So we're seeing a slightly cooler push of air in parts of Val Verde County. 72 in the morning tomorrow, low 90s for a high temperature. We'll have some sunshine again, a few showers lingering for the morning commute. Either way, probably some wet roads for the morning commute. Then by the afternoon, just a 20% chance of a few pop up showers and thunderstorms. We look ahead and there we go. That 40% chance Thursday afternoon, increasing rain chances again, looking promising Friday and Saturday. We're expecting some scattered to widespread sh showers and storms and probably a few more inches of rain for some folks with highs in the lower 80s at that time. And then once we get on into the end of the weekend and early next week, the rain chances taper off a bit. KSAT Weather Authority app will keep you updated, allow notifications. Certainly need the rain at this point. Thank you. By the way, this is the hand signal for app. 
if you're one. <laughs> that. That's what Adam's come up with. <laughs> Trademark Adam Kasky, 2021. All right, the Cowboys phone. win last night. Was it the signature win they needed? Yeah, I'll tell you what. It, everybody contributed, so I think that's what made it a signature win. When we come back, we'll talk about how the Cowboys are calling us a complete win, and the Spurs are fully vaccinated. What got some off the fence coming up? Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys are now the beast of the East after beating their division rivals, the Philadelphia Eagles, last night in their home opener. It marked the first home game back for Dak Prescott since he shattered his ankle in week five of last season. And he did not miss a beat. Prescott threw for 238 yards, three touchdowns, starting the game off with a 75-yard drive, capped off by this one-yard touchdown by Ezekiel Elliott. Elliott would finish with 95 yards, two TDs. His second coming after the Eagles scored a TD on a strip sack before the Cowboys answered with three straight. Prescott to Dalton Schultz with a 19-yard score before a lengthy 13-play 65-yard drive capped off by Elliott's second touchdown of the night, a three-yard run, and after that missed extra point as a 20-7 lead. That's when the defense steps up. Trayvon Diggs jumps around as the receiver falls down, picks off his third interception of the season. This time he's bringing it back for the 59-yard return as the Cowboys route the Eagles 41-21 to go 2-1 and one on the season, a complete victory. It feels great, like you said, complete from defense, offense, uh, complimentary football, um, all the way around, just from, from halftime, just the way to continue, continue it, the way we communicate it. Um, that, that was fun. I think that showed just the, the brotherhood that we're creating and the culture that we're creating within this team. And um, that, that's just one, and that's just a step. And that was a big step in, a, in the building block of where we're going and what we're trying to accomplish. I think today we came out hot. We got a fast start, um, but you know we left some points out there. Um, I think we uh, we gave them more of a chance than than uh, they should have. Uh, I think you know we played well, uh, we got the win, but uh, there's definitely a lot we got to clean up. I feel like you know as a player, it's all about growth, and you know I feel like I'm growing and I'm learning. So you know I'm just trying to keep growing and just reach it's the highest level I can. And, you know, just pushing and just working, just working hard. Boy, for Traylon, what a game so far this season. He's had three interceptions in three games. First time that's happened, I believe, since Everson Walls did that back in 1985. Here's the matchup next. Take on the undefeated Carolina Panthers Sunday at noon in AT&T Stadium. Tonight on the night beat, we'll visit with Micah Parsons. Spurs head coach Greg Popovich announced at the opening of training camp that his team is 100% fully vaccinated. What made players like Lonnie Walker IV, who was on the fence, decide to get vaccinated for COVID-19. The best thing that I did for myself was I tried to get the best information. So I asked these questions and figured out, you know, what was best for myself, my family, my teammates, and so on and so forth. And, you know, I think we all have the same similar eye view on this, and we all kind of got vaccinated on it. Yeah, and what Pop had to say, too, about that, they didn't want to go through what they had to go through Charlotte last year right. when they had to miss, a lot of players had to miss games, and they had to move a lot of their games, I think it was, what, five of them, to the second half of the season to play them, that had to be tough. It, it's interesting listening to a lot of players that are trying to get educated and figure out whether or not they should get the vaccine. Like all of us should, right? Like all of us should. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. We'll be right back. Remember tonight between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. is the most likely time period for heavy rain around San Antonio tapering off toward the morning commute tomorrow. KSAT Weather 30 app will keep you updated, even be broadcasting live. What's the symbol, Steve? Just this. There it is. The app. See you at six. <laughs>